Guys, I'm back with another portable Clint. Guys, I have been out here for 34 years, but there's an important part to my history. The very first star Hollywood movie star I ever met was my was my guest here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Carrie Scott. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know about movie star, but Carrie, buddy. <laughs> in my world, in my world, you were literally the first movie star I ever, ever met. Really? And dude, I was but starstruck not, over you. I'm not a movie star. <laughs> but you were. No, you are. You are. And but to me, you were. As I get older, I see what you're saying. But in my eyes, you were yeah, a movie star. Yeah. But I'm going to get to that in two seconds, okay. okay? Okay. All right. So, Carrie, tell me when you first decided to be an actor. Oh, man, I should have prepared for this. I know, uh, right? <laughs> uh, it's a long story, but I'll make it as short as I can. Um, I was in a terrible junior high school that I hated. Okay. And uh, miserable. Seventh and eighth grade, miserable time. And my stepfather was opening a performing arts school in San Diego. And he said, hey, you hate your junior high, why don't you come over to this school? And, you know, they offered singing, dancing, and acting. Sure. I didn't want to sing because that seemed terrifying. Exactly. I didn't want to dance because that seemed, you know, I was a guy. And, yeah, know, yeah, we don't dance. Uh, yeah, exactly. Which was stupid, we, of course. Of course, you know, yeah. I wish mean, I had. Yeah, every, yeah. Uh, I ended up taking a few dance classes. And the other, other option was uh, was acting. So I went into acting class just kind of on fluke. And um, you had to be pretty young. Well, how young were you when you started that? I was that? 14. 14 years old? Yeah. Okay. Where, where was this taking place? This was in San Diego. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't know you were from San Diego. From San Diego. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. When did you move up to L.A. to pursue it big well, time? Well, I started auditioning in L.A., driving up from San Diego in 1982. I moved here in 1986, January of 86. Okay, but now the cool thing about the beginning of your IMDb page, you have a lot of after shows, not 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 <laughs> after not, not after the union. Yeah, after <laughs> shows. After shows, yeah. Which means you did. Go ahead. Well, there was all in the family. I did Archie Bunker's place, right? And then there was what's happening and I did what's happening now right and then there was mash and I did after, after mash, mash. Yeah. yes <laughs> were you like, were, the first were you specifically shows. going for those after shows <laughs> I was going for whatever my agent would send me out on. okay yeah. all right okay now let's get to what I what put you on my map okay me and my I have a lot of best friends Okay, but yeah. I only have a, a couple, two super best friends. Okay. Jeff Shepler. You don't know him okay. yet, but you do know him. Okay. He and I moved out here in 87, 1987. He and I had a favorite film called Making the Grade. <laughs> okay. I move out here and then we live in a, we, we live in an apartment, he and I, with some other people. And those people were good friends with Brandon Douglas. Right. Yeah. Are you still in contact with Brandon I am, Douglas? yeah. Brandon was my best friend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I, the girl that people were living with, I guess, is Julie Condra. Right. And they were dating. They were and dating. And then you came over with Brandon, and Jeff and I freak out because, oh my God, that's the guy in our favorite movie, Making the Great. That was really your favorite yes. movie? Yes. Yeah, huh? Well, listen, it was an 80s 80s well, teen film that we yeah, loved. I don't yeah. know if it was my favorite favorite, yeah. but it was one of my favorites. Yeah. But it was you, dude, and I freaked out. We were like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> so that was really neat. Well. But as as the good, let me tell you something that really woke me up. Okay. So we, we started hanging out, you and I. I say you and I, all, all four yeah, of us. Yeah, that whole group did. Yeah. I don't remember that day right. meeting you, but I remember hanging out. I don't, yeah. yeah. But then, dude, so to me, you're a gigantic movie star, okay? <laughs> but to me, I'm 18 years old, dude. I'm 18 years old. And dude, this is the only, and I'm not shaming this, but this is literally, this was a woke moment. Hmm. I put you up here, and you still are up and there. And then you got way. to know me. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> Way but down then, here. <laughs> then I found out that you were, you, dude, this sounds so, remember I'm 18 years old. Yeah. I'm from Texas. I'm green. I don't yeah. know anything. I'm thinking you're going to live in a mansion yeah. in Beverly Hills because you were in a movie. <laughs> oh, man. 
but I, I th that was the first time I saw the the behind an actor yeah. scene, which you were working at LA Fitness. Yeah, that's right. And I was like, wait. That's right. Again, I'm not shaming that by any means, but to me, an 18 year old kid from Corpus Christi, Texas, I'm like, wait. I thought movie stars belong <laughs> in big houses, but this guy's working at LA Fitness, but he's on a movie. Yeah. A time. So that was all mind blowing to me. Yeah, I had forgotten all about that. And it, it came to my attention recently because I've always prided myself on, hey, I've you know never had a job. Yeah, I've always, yeah, yeah, always yeah. worked as an actor. Yeah. And I worked at LA Fitness for three weeks. And, <laughs> and okay. I was selling subscriptions or whatever you call it you know trying to get people to come into the gym yeah, and, yeah, go, yeah. and they used me as the the model because, guy uh, and i'm like <laughs> you know i'm like <laughs> i weighed like 112 yeah, pounds yeah, at the yeah, time yeah, you know yeah. um and i sold i don't know what you call it but tried to get I people think to come memberships. memberships i tried to sell memberships and i worked there for a total of three weeks yeah okay so I just wanted to say that again, not shaming, but my mind, <laughs> no. I was just trying to adjust to this whole world of wait, wait, what? Yeah. Okay. But dude, I loved you ever since because again, <laughs> well, we, I loved you ever since we, I don't know if you remember, you coined the, the most beautiful phrase. You called all of us movie starts. <laughs> Do you remember no, that? No, that uh, sounds great. You know, all this whole group of people, we were all movie starts because we we're starting out <laughs> and trying to get our first jobs, you know? Yeah, trying yeah, to get yeah. our first movies. Wow, okay. We weren't movie stars, we were movie starts. That's funny, <laughs> That's man. That's hilarious. Okay, wait, I don't really like to talk about other people other than the person I'm talking about, but what's up with Brandon Douglas? Brandon Douglas went on, he was on Me The Medicine Woman. Yeah, Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. Um, he did a whole bunch of series. He did like four series in a row. Ferris Bueller? Uh, Ferris Bueller, he played the Cameron Cam Fry yeah. uh, character on the TV series yeah. of Ferris Bueller. And then Class of 96. That's and, right. Um, did a lot of great shows and then quit the business completely. Well, that's the reason why I'm bringing it up yeah. because you would think people would quit the business because they had no success. He had success yeah. and he quit. Yeah, he did. He had four or five series in a row and then just up and quit. Um, he was tired of auditioning frankly. Really? And yeah. People get tired of auditioning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Enough about him. Enough about him. Let's get back to you. Tell me how you booked Making the Great. Just because it's it's an 80s film. If you haven't seen it, check it out. But tell me how you got that gig. Um, well, I just went in and read. You know, my agent, her name was Mary Grady, and uh, she sent me on this interview, and I read with, um, with her, with Julie Selzer, who was the casting director. And as soon as I was done reading, she said, I want to take you upstairs. This is a studio film. This is MGM. Yeah. And so she took me upstairs to meet the director and the producers. And I read for them. And uh, the weekend went by. And on Monday, they called. And I mean, it was, it was as simple just as that. that. Simple? simple as that. I read two times and then got hired. And then I went to Memphis, Tennessee for two months. First time away from home. And you're hanging out with Judd Nelson? Judd Nelson's first and a half film he had st he had done half a film he had done half of the movie fandango oh yes and then that's a they, great they movie. had lost their money uh, lost their budget and so he shot making the grade and then went back and finished fandango really? so he had shot judd had shot a half a movie at that point Carrie, those are literally two of my favorite 80s films really, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 fandango's I, awesome oh it's the best and get this i was with Judd when he found out that he booked uh, The Breakfast Club. Really? I was standing there with him when he Tell got the Tell me about that because I yeah. liked little stories like that. Where, where, do, you, do you guys remember where you were? Well, we were, we, we had shot Making the Grade, which was also a lot of people's first films. It was Andrew Dice Clay's I want to get to that. Movie. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it yeah. was a lot of people, um, you know, uh, uh, John Dye and Dan Schneider and all these people. Um, but a year later, almost a year, about nine months later, we were looping Making the Grade in, uh, I can't remember what studio, but we were looping making the grade and we were in a soundproof room, uh, you know, doing our looping session and a phone call came in and Judd answers the phone and it's John Hughes on the line telling him that he was gonna hire him for the breakfast. Club. That's awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. I love that. Yeah. Okay, going back to Andrew Dice Clay, he's in this film. Yeah. And at that time he was just Andrew Clay. Yeah, he this is the first time he was Dice. In hey, how did he find Dice in this movie? I know it's I know he becomes that, but is it because of this movie he becomes no, Dice? No, he was doing stand up as Dice already. Okay. And All he right. asked but in the film, originally his name his character's name was Marshall. And he went to the producers and said, Look, I've been working on this character because the Dice thing is trust me, is a character. It's not him. 
it's a character he plays. And he said, you know, I want to, I want to try this character that I've been working on, Dice, Dice Man. You know, uh, can I, you know, would you let me do that for the movie? And they said, sure. And they let him do it. And uh, that's where Dice was kind of born in a, you know, outside of comedy clubs. Okay, the the actor that's paying Judd Nelson to take the classes for him. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, yeah, Dana Olson. What happened to him? Dana's a writer. Um, he wrote The Burbs, the Tom Hanks movie. Which you were in. Which I was in. It got cut out of. Okay, well, um, you're still in it. Yeah. <laughs> in my book. He, uh, he wrote um, uh, a bunch of, like, um, like uh, Inspector Gadget and, you know, a lot of these, like, kind of kid films. Um, there was several of them. Uh, uh, George of the Jungle. You know? Okay, how does a guy like this start? Is a lead in a movie, but never really does. Any, is it? Is it? Was it by choice that he became a writer, or is he said, "I'm done with the acting"? No, That's he well. was always a writer, and I, I, I don't know 100 percent sure, but I think he was friendly with the producer, and the producer of the of making the great said, "Hey, man, why don't you play this character? It'd be fun. It's only acting is ever done." And most recently, he has a show on Nickelodeon right now called Henry Danger. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Two so last things. On. Two last things on making the great. Maybe. Uh, it says at the very end of the movie that you guys will be back for tour Turista. What is it? Turista, yeah. Okay, so you thought there was a sequel coming? Yeah, yeah. Tell me about that and how it went south. It's just, I don't know what happened, honestly. I don't know what happened. They, they, at the end it says um, that J Judd's character and Dana's character were going to come back in Turista, which broke my heart because well, yeah. I was like, well, what about Rand? You know, what about well, me? Dude, I just always assumed that I, was you and, and him for and, some reason. And I assumed I would be a part of it. And and there was talk about it, you know, on our set, but it never, it never happened. Oh well, Carrie, if that ever happened, if that ever happened, they would have had to put you in it because you were the glue in that whole. They should do it now. Yes, well, they think. should. They should do it now. Okay, is there anything I need, any backstories to that film? It, this is my last question on it, but just because I love it so much, is there anything else I need to know about that film? Um, <clears throat> that you need to know? <laughs> that I want to know? <laughs> no, it was it was new for a lot of us. It was, you know, Andrew Dice Clay was new to movies. John Dye, who ended up uh, as the angel of death on uh, Touched by an Angel. Okay, It was yes, his first right. show. Dan Schneider, who ended up basically running Nickelodeon, yeah. was his first movie. Um, it, it was just a lot of our. We was it was a lot of young kids, kind of you know figuring it out as we go. But you you were the one who kind of introduced everybody. You had you gave preppy rules to everyone. Yeah, the original title of the film was the unofficial preppy movie. Really? That's what we filmed it under. Yeah. T can you quote your line? The preppy, not preppy. Can you do any of that? Uh, all I remember is the ending, which is uh, preppy. I don't even remember it. Preppy. Come lately, preppy. Come never, preppy forever. I love this. I mean, dude, seriously, it, this is awesome. Just sitting next to you, hearing you say that, dude. I'm not kidding, Carrie. Oh, okay, so you do that. You shoot that in '84. No, it shot comes out in '84. Yeah, shot in '83. So you're living in San Diego while while doing this. You're yeah. having a career living in San Diego. Yeah. You do this. You go out to Memphis for two months and yeah. film. Do you think your your career starts? This is it. You're going to be a big movie star. What, what yes. are your thoughts? <laughs> That's okay. my thoughts. I think, you know, I did. It's my first movie, and it's a starring role in an MGM film. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, this is it. This is I'm huge. Yeah. Yeah. No. MGM too, man. No, to me, that's like right. MGM is a cool yeah. old Hollywood. Yeah. Okay, but you do, but you, but you do work. Yeah. You work. You get yeah. nice credits. Yeah. Um, what? Tell me, what was where where was the struggle? Because I was looking at your IMDb, you pretty much have every year covered. There's like maybe two or three gaps. Yeah. But you've always yeah. been a working actor. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been real lucky. I mean, you know, knock on wood. For how um, many years? It started in '83. What was your first yeah. credit? '83. '83. I think I did a commercial, and I think I I did a, a commercial in '82. A couple commercials in '82. Um, but 83 is when I got my SAG card and when I started like really working. So yeah, it's 37 years, 38 years, something like that. What was the hardest time of those 38 years? The early 90s was the toughest period. Why? I, I don't know. I don't know. I had done a movie called Diving In um, that we shot in Indiana 
and uh, which was a great experience and a, a great time. And I had a you know nice big fat starring role. It was very exciting and worked with some great people who I'm still friends with to this day. And that was in '89. And then like I got back thinking you know again like after making the grade, oh man I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna tear up this town you know I'm just another starring role in a big film. And it's just you know. I don't know, a couple of years went by with really slow, a few commercials, did a few plays, um, and that was it. It just dried up for a while. Did you move, when did you move to L.A. proper? Well, I moved to L.A. in 1983. Okay, you yeah. moved there in 83. Yeah. When did you? No, no, that's not right. I know, because they, I no, know. 86. 86. I moved, I moved in January of 86. Yeah. How did you find those friends, that, that group of friends that you have with the movie starts? Uh, <laughs> Brandon and I, uh, we spoke about a minute ago, we met on a film called Not Quite Human that we were in Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay. And we became fast friends. We have the same birthday and oh, wow. we, you know, we bonded real quick over that. We were like best friends in about 12 minutes and have, we're still great friends. He's, uh, been in both my weddings. You know? Great. <laughs> He's a, yeah. I, I said I always like to talk about the person who's here, but I just want to tell you one quick story about Brandon Douglas, and I'm sorry that no, 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 Brandon Douglas. No, no, please. But remember, I was 18 years old when yeah. I was hanging out with you guys. Yeah. I remember we all went out somewhere like that, and Brandon, something happened to Brandon Douglas, and he said, dude, don't hit my face. I have an audition tomorrow. <laughs> That sounds like Brandon. That's not Brandon today. Yeah. And I'm like, what, dude? He can't hit his face because he has an audition. I never understood that. And then once I started in this business, yeah. I'm like, dude, kids, yeah. Yeah. don't touch my this face. Money I have an, audi yeah. an audition tomorrow. Exactly. And I was saying the exact same exactly. thing he that's said. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like Brandon. Yeah, Julie funny. Condra, what's up with Julie Condra? Do you know? Um, well, you know they divorced. Sure, and, I, I, and, yeah. Uh, she married an actor named Mark another Dacostas. working actress. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah. Uh, Julie's awesome, gorgeous, and awesome. Um, and she married an actor called Mark Dacascas, who's um, currently in John Wick Three. Okay. Um, and you know he's amazing. He's you know karate and you know he's one sure. of those guys he's awesome and so and they've had a bunch of kids and they're very happy is she an actress anymore she just starred in a film in uh thailand yeah yeah just had a big starring role in a film with with her husband with mark together and their daughter yeah it's like a family affair okay so it looks you, great i've seen the trailer really? i haven't seen the film yeah. okay it looks great so you're living here in hollywood mm -hmm. you're moving here in 86 when do you move back to San Diego? Because I knew you moved back to San Diego. Yeah. When, when and why did you move back to San Diego? I moved back originally. I, I moved back twice. I moved back in 94 um, originally for a while. Why? Um, I, I want to know why people give up. I, I mean, not that you yep. gave up, but I want to know why and how you made that decision yeah. to go. I'm moving. Did you quit Hollywood or no. you just wanted to get away from Hollywood? Yeah, I just wanted to get away. I never quit. I was still, I mean, I think the day after I moved back to San Diego, I had to come right back up to LA for an audition. So I kept working and kept auditioning. I just was, uh, not to offend anyone who loves this city, but I got tired of Los Angeles. It was, really? It was, yeah, I just, really? I did. I did. The LA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, I'm... yeah, I know, weird, huh? <laughs> I know. Uh, the traffic and the, you know, and, and as much, I love show business yeah. so much. Me I mean, too. it's right up there in my top five of things that I love yeah. along with my wife and my kids. I love show business, but it was like, I couldn't go to McDonald's or 7-Eleven without people talking about what audition they had or what movie they just worked on. And I needed a little bit of an escape from that. When you heard them talking about Hollywood, is it because Hollywood wasn't calling you at the time and they were calling these other people? No, it wasn't like a jealousy thing. It was just the only thing. You know, it was the only thing that people talked about. And, and you can tell when people are embellishing or lying or making stuff up to make themselves, you know. And I just was, I just, I needed a break from it for a while. Okay, so you moved down there mm -hmm. and like you, you came up the next day to have auditions and you said you moved back and you ended up moving yeah. back. Why did you move back to Hollywood? Um, not to sound, but I was working a lot. I started working a lot again and the drive was killing me. I was did you reinvent yourself to work a lot? How did you start working a lot again? You know what happened is I did a movie, this is so weird, but I did a movie with Chuck Norris 
And I'm so glad you said that. Okay, go ahead. It Chuck, like, we became friendly, and they he kept hiring me over and over. And yeah, he I, hired you 14 times yeah, for Walker, for Walker Texas Ranger, and and then uh, I've done I don't know how many features, probably five or six films with him and and his uh, brother Aaron, who directs writes, a lot of yeah. films, and his son Mike, who also directs and, and writes and. The whole family kind of just took me in and I just kept working for them a lot. Okay, well I want to know a bit more about this. Why does Walker love you? I mean, what? why does Chuck Norris love you? I have no idea. Well, that's not true, I have an idea. Okay, can I'll, you it, can It's you a tell? story. I want to okay. hear it, please. <laughs> so, we were, I was in a film called Top Dog. And I Top had, Dog, yeah. is that with the dog? With the that's, dog. I know, what's what's that dog doing in this one? Um, it's a cop partner, it's like canine or right. what's the other one? Yeah, Turner I, and Hooch, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a cop and a dog yeah, partner. Okay, okay. And so Chuck has this uh, dog partner and, it's, and he's uh, uh, he's new to the dog Green like game. that, that sounds yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like the third one in a row. Yeah. And so, um, and so uh, um, Chuck has this dog partner that he doesn't know how to work with. Because, sure, I, yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> and so I play this uh, this cop who comes in and the dog is supposed to search the house for drugs. And Chuck, Chuck gives the dog commands, you know, go find the drugs, whatever, and the dog's not doing anything. So my line, or he says to me, Chuck says, uh, why don't you guys step outside? The dog can't work if you're here. And my line is, okay, if that's what the dog needs to work. And so we did a few takes of that, and I'm like, okay, you know, if that's what the dog needs to work, fine, you know, we'll step out. And then I was like, we were in between takes, and I'm like, I'm gonna try something. So on the next take, I uh, Chuck says his line, hey, you guys need to step outside. Uh, uh, the dog can't work with, your, with you here. And so I look at Chuck and I go, okay, if that's what he needs to work, huh? Okay, <laughs> you know, and I kind of laugh and walk out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was cut. And I look over at, uh, at Chuck, and Chuck walks over to the director, who's his brother, Aaron, walks over to like streamlines for him. And I can hear them whispering. <laughs> and, he, and Chuck is pointing at me. Because, you know, I kind of made fun of him. And sure, Chuck's sure, a superhero, sure. yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so he's pointing at me. And, and, I, and, and, and I look over and I'm like, I'm fired. I'm fired. I, they're going to fire me right now. And I look over and Aaron, Chuck's brother, the director, looks at me and he goes, you know, like this. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. And I walk over to Aaron. And you know Chuck's a few feet away now, and Aaron looks at me and he goes, and he, he just he like you know these eyes, these Norris eyes. And he looks at me and he goes, that was really funny. Do that again. <laughs> like, oh, oh, a heart attack, you know. And so I went over and I did it again, and I said it that way, and we did it again. And when we wrapped, you know, Aaron said, you know, you're kind of making fun of the star of the movie, you know. Chuck, he's like, but we, it is a comedy, and we have a sense of humor about that, yes. and we decided it worked and and within a week they hired me for their next film and how did you get wait okay me. hang on how did you get that phone call for, for the next project um so you're at home you just finished I the movie remember. I, I, believe, I just like i like the people who you meet that you have no idea are going to be the ones who yeah. bless you with work yeah. later well, on. and they still do i mean they still after all these years i mean that was 20 something years ago you know and um, all because you took a chance on yes, the set. Yes, I guarantee you, if I didn't take that risk in that moment, it would have been a one and done. I would have done the one film, it would have been over with. But I took a risk, and I went for it. And they That's appreciated so that. Yeah, and, he, and Aaron told me later, he's like, well, you appreciated that, man. You went for it. And it brought something, you know, brought the scene up. And, and it kept me in business with them for the next 25 years. When you said that line that, that you risked, did you think about it the night before maybe you should do that? Or did you just no, spur the it moment? Was, it was in between takes. I went, ah, I'm just gonna try it this next take. I just went for it. Have, it, you, it have you done that before, take risks on sets? I try to all the time. Um, sometimes they fall flat, you know, yeah, they yeah, die. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and sometimes they work, you know. When you but, forget a line on a set, do you beat yourself improv. up? No, I improv. So you don't say, oh, guys, I just messed up. You just... I try not to. There might be video proof of the yeah, contrary yeah, yeah, out exactly, there somewhere. Exactly. But I try to improv my way through it. I try not to stop or cut. So how do you do Walker? Are you? Do they fly you to Dallas each time you did an episode of Walker, Texas Ranger? Yeah, yeah, we were... Um, Wait, did you have a, a specific character that you were on that show? No, I played a... Well, yeah, I played a movie director. 
for 22 episodes? N no, no, no. Most of it was uh, voice work that we did okay. later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I okay. played a film director. I can't remember his name, but he was over the top. He was ridiculous. It. I've been yeah. watching Walker, Texas Ranger again. That's lately. fun. I love it. It's yeah. a great show to put on. You don't have to think. Yeah. It's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> I love it's, it. It's, I mean, yeah. it really is yeah, great. Well, you know, it's a formula show. Yeah, sure. dude. And, yeah. It, I, and did you know they're, waking, they're making a remake? I do. Yeah. It's called Walker. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tell me about what was the best time in Hollywood for you? Like, what was like the happiest days? Oh man, the happiest days. Yeah. Honestly, were uh, with people like you and Brandon and uh, running around. We, we used to go to Westwood, remember, yeah, and oh, walk dude. around yes, and just be obnoxious, it, yes. be stupidly obnoxious. Those were my. Those were really fun days. Those were great yeah. days. Uh, Westwood back in the late 80s, early 90s were something that L.A. does not have anything yeah. close to anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. It was, it was really fun. neat. And it was all new, you know. Yep. I was away from home for the first time. And, you know, we were picking up on, well, trying to pick up on girls like crazy. And we were running around just being crazy and, and having fun. But also, you know, deep in our work, you know. And, and, and I uh, uh, eventually... You know, started studying with uh, Stella Adler. You know, was one of the most important. When did you start studying? Ever. When did you start studying? I started with her in 1989. So you went to. You, you've already. You're already established actor, mm -hmm. and you said, "I'm going to better myself in the middle of my yeah. career." Yeah. Because see, once I like, I don't need it anymore. I mean, I need it really badly. <laughs> but I'm thinking, well, I don't need it. I mean, I'm yeah. booking. I'm booking. Why? Yeah. Why do it? But you're smart enough and wise enough to say, I want to get better. Yeah, I needed to get better. I wanted to get better. And and who better than her? You know, um, she was a legend. And, and and you know, she had studied directly under Stanislavski himself. She was the only American to actually study with Stanislavski. Wow. And, uh, with, you know, and her best friends were people like Tennessee Williams and Arthur Miller and, you know, and I went, I, I you know, it's an opportunity I can't. And I ended up being with her for about six years. I was in her very last class uh, before she died. Really? Yeah. Is there anything that you could teach me that you learned so I don't have to go six years of it? <laughs> There's so much. I know, but give me, so like, give me like the top two things that I need to know as an actor. Well, my, my favorite thing that she ever said to me was the value of the theater or the film, the value of the theater is that you take home with you more than what you paid for the ticket. And that meant a lot to me. Say that again, please. The value of the theater or the film is that you take home with you more than what you paid for the ticket. I like that. I like that a lot. That, yes. That meant a lot to me. That meant that we have a responsibility as actors to bring it, to bring yeah. something interesting and powerful and different. So when the movie goer or the theater goer goes home, they feel like they got more than their money's worth. Yeah. That it's yeah. more than what they paid for the ticket. I would have paid two hundred dollars to see that play because I took so much with me out of that. Have you seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood yet? I have. How many yeah. times? I met Quentin Tarantino last week. Really? By accident. At Amoeba down the street. Really? Yeah. He wouldn't take a picture with me, but he shook my hand. <laughs> what did he say? Wait, how did you ask him for a picture? I just said I, I he walked passed me a couple of times at Amoeba and I I was like you know said the same thing that everybody that he sure, says he sure. hears 8,000 yeah, times a yeah, day yeah. Quentin I'm a huge fan I love you so much uh, <laughs> oh, give anything to work question. for you here you know and, and, can I get a quick picture with you <laughs> no I don't do that oh okay <laughs> so he said, but I'll shake your hand you know and he shook my hand we talked for a minute it was really it was really cool how many times have you seen um the, his last film, um, what's it called? I just said it. Yeah, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. I've just seen it once. Yeah. You got to see it twice. Okay. And I've never. That's re, that's the reason why I'm bringing this up with what you just said. The second time you see it, totally different film. Yeah. It's even yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. even better. Yeah. And that movie making it was way worth more than the twenty dollars I gave. Yeah, me. exactly. That and, was your point. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. left there thinking about it thinking yeah. about it thinking about it like some other films i watched it leave no yeah. twice about yeah, it yeah totally but and i you like forget, that advice frankly. Yeah. yeah anything else one one more piece of advice that you learned oh, from her oh gosh from her um well there's so many little quotes that i love um uh, uh, talking about how the words she uh, i don't know if there's one direct quote but she spoke a lot about how the words mean nothing and that's not about writers not doing their job is that the actor has to bring so much to those words and she kept saying 
that we are always, she would say, you're drunk with words, you're infected with words. All you do is go to the words and you need to go find out what's behind those words and, and not and stop speaking words, start speaking ideas, start speaking values start speaking motivations rather than just the words and it made me really kind of relook at the way that I read scripts and 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 break down every word yeah and, and, and stop just saying the words and put much more behind them than I used to when you moved to Hollywood when you when the first time young how young were you when you moved here uh, I would have been uh, when I actually moved here would have been 23 Okay, at 23, what did you want to accomplish in Hollywood? At 23, what did you want to achieve? What did you want? I thought I was going to be Matthew Perry on Friends. I thought I was going to hit it huge on a sitcom. That was my kind of, I was doing mostly comedy at the time. I do mostly drama now, but I was doing mostly comedy at the time. And I had done some, you know, sitcoms in front of a live studio audience, you know, Mr. Belvedere. Archie Bunker that was shot right here at CBS. Really? Yeah, my first job ever right over here at CBS. I didn't know any sitcoms ever filmed yeah, here. Yeah, we shot Obviously on the, the top floor. the game shows film there. Oh yeah, no, we shot Archie Bunker's place right here okay. uh, at CBS. And so I'd done some live studio audience shows and I thought, yeah, I'll hit a sitcom that runs for 10 years, you know, that kind of thing, which how, I didn't. How close did you get to be a, <laughs> how close did you get to be a sitcom series regular? What was the closest? Um, just, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, test deals, you know, pilots and stuff. How many know, times have you tested? Good. Oh, I don't know. Um, a lot? Not a lot. Five or six, probably. I've Over never three. tested before. Really? No, never. Really? Never. You're kidding. I'm not kidding you. That shocks me. And yeah. I, that's one of my biggest, because I was like not you, kidding. when I first moved out here, I thought I was going to be, you know, yeah. the dude. And, yeah. But I, I mean, I'm, I can't complain. I, I'm very yeah. thankful for what I have yeah. done. But this is five or six. It sounds like a lot to some people, maybe. But that, that's over, you know, nearly but, forty years. But that's still, <laughs> but that's still a lot. So, though. That's still a lot. Wow. I mean, to us actors who know, that's a lot. Yeah, but didn't hit a single yeah. one of them. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> really quick, what's your proudest credit that you have? Oh gosh. Um. Well, I was in this second to the last episode of Mad Men and being a yes, part of were. Mad Men was a big deal because it was you know it was a phenomenon it was a huge show so I was really happy to book Mad Men um, I was really proud of 21 Jump Street because that's what I want to talk yeah. to you about yes yeah. I do yes yeah, you that, were awesome on 21 that was Jump a big thank you that was a big one for me because at the, when I did Jump Street it was literally the number one show on television at the time and Johnny Depp was the biggest star on television at the time and Just to bring so, Brandon Douglas back into the conversation, <laughs> I, he, I think he did the pilot. He Brandon did the pilot, and then uh, they brought him back, and then brought yeah near the end of the first season they brought his character back. Yeah. Which I am loving. That's the reason why I think I love Twenty One Jump Street so much is because I knew you guys. I'm like, oh my god, I, I'm hanging out with these guys right now in my life, and they're on Twenty One Jump Street. <laughs> So again, I was just yeah. starstruck. But anyway, go back. But that was that was a big deal because it because it was so big. Fox was a new network at the time. Johnny was the biggest star on television. Twenty One Jump Street was the biggest show on television. So I was really excited to book that job, and I got paired up with Brad Pitt. Yeah, you so, sure did. You so sure all, did. But but what happened was all my scenes are with Johnny Depp and Brad Pitt, and I'm like in the middle, so no one's looking at me. <laughs> You're the two most gorgeous men in Hollywood, and me in the middle. I love it. Very I do it. I just watched that episode probably about six months ago. Yeah, yeah, I really did. Yeah. Hey, did you know John, uh, Brad Pitt would become Brad Pitt? No. He didn't stand no. out to you at that No, he set? did. It, he did. And we stayed friends for a lot of years. And I watched him become huge. And and it, it, it honestly, it did surprise me a little bit. I knew he was very good looking. And he was very talented. But I didn't see what he became. And I just saw Ad Astra and he's phenomenal. Really? Right? But yeah, I thought it was great. But I didn't see that. You know who I thought would be huge was Judd Nelson. I thought Judd Nelson was going to be Robert De Niro. I really did. I thought Judd Nelson was going to be Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, somebody huge. 
Um, well, let me ask you a question. And he was for a while after Breakfast Club and all that. But. Do you still keep in contact with him at all? No. Uh, well, I saw Judd recently. I did a movie with Judd 35 years after I did Making the Grade. Did he remember you? Yeah, yeah. We had a great time reminiscing and everything. It was uh, it was great. Okay, we're not talking bad about him, but let me ask you this. How come he didn't become Robert Downey? I mean, how come he didn't become De Niro? What, what do you think was the reason? Well, I can't say for sure, but... Um, you know, during the whole Brat Pack time, his reputation kind of caught up with him, I think, and that hurt him a little bit. Yeah. And he's very talented and uh, should be. Because he was intense. Remember. Like, he was an intense actor, which is, makes us fun to watch. I mean, he, you know, he's endlessly watchable in Breakfast Club, and, you know, he's a great actor. And I, I felt bad that it didn't explode the way it should have. I mean, it did for a while, but then it kind of went away. Worst day on a set. Worst day on a set? Yes. Oh man, I've, I don't want to, <laughs> oh boy, I don't want to name names. Well, um, well, you don't have to name the name, just tell me why. Uh, I, I, I did a film a couple of years ago with some actors that were une inexplicably and horrifically awful people. That's Are they still around as, today? Yeah. Are they yeah, you big? know who both you okay, know who okay, both okay, of them okay. are. That's all I need to know. Um, and it was I can't say their names, but um, it was a horrible time with them. Making the movie was fun. Um, the director is uh, I'm very close with, and I love him. Um, I worked with some great actors in this film that I admire and was lucky to work with. But I worked with a couple of people that were really truly awful to me, and it was uh, I don't understand it to this day why and how, but it happens. <laughs> Have you ever? That's my word. Okay, okay, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> and that wasn't worst day. That was worst, you know, month, you know. Um, but it had. It was no fault of the director, of the producer, of the other actors. It was just these two people that were really pretty awful to me. Okay, my last couple of questions. <laughs> Have you ever thought about seriously quitting the whole business? No, really, never have. I, I, I can't do anything else. I, I don't know how to do same anything here, Same here. Karen. I have no choice. Karen, and why, why do you, yes. Yeah, why I have no I'm, skills. Yes, I don't either. Literally, none. Yeah, me too. Okay. You know the resume where they have the people write the oh, special yeah, skills? Yeah, no, I've never had that. Me either. <laughs> Carrie, none. I think I had like tennis and skiing yeah, like and 25 darts. years ago. Yeah, I, nothing. <laughs> I have no special skills. I don't play an instrument. Right. I, I, you know. Okay, but besides that, what keeps you going through all of these years? What's that little thing that keeps you going? I'm an actor. I'm an actor, and not because you, and not because you don't know anything else. Because I mean, if we had to, we would know. But something has to be the reason why you keep going. Why is that? Um, I'll tell you what. Which is go ahead. Go ahead. Last week, I, I worked just last week, which was so great. Um, doing the new uh, Ryan Murphy Netflix. Uh, limited series called Hollywood and it's about the history of Hollywood. Really? Yeah. Oh man. And I'm a huge, huge Hollywood buff, Same you know, here. the old days. Same and I played here, Leo McCary, the director, and I was very familiar with Leo McCary, the director. He directed some great films that I love. And we were filming at Sunset Gower Studios right down the street. And uh, we're on a sound stage, which I love working on sound stage because yeah. you just feel like yeah, you know you're yeah, in it. You yeah. know? And we were shooting on a sound stage that Leo McCary had directed a movie on. Awesome. And we were on a break, and I was walking out of the sound stage. And this is 1940s. So this is 1942. We're shooting, and there's all these uh, uh, actors all dressed in 40s uh, uh, clothing. Attire. Yeah. And I walk out of the sound stage and I hear the bell ringing as they're closing the door. And I look out and it's like all these people dressed in 1940s clothes, just like they show in the old movies, yeah, you know, in old yeah, movies where yeah. they, they show people on sound stage, yeah. you know, on the studio lots and all the people are walking. Yeah, by. I love those shots. Yeah, and so they're all walking by and I turn to my left and there's the Hollywood sign uh, to my left. And I'm walking off the sound stage in my 40s clothes and there's all these people in 40s clothes and I'm like, that's why I'm still doing this. Amen, brother. It was a pure, beautiful moment for me. And I that's love why. those moments, that's man. That's why. Yeah, that's why. Because once in a while, it's really, really great. Yeah. It's really wonderful. And it makes all the time in between when you can't get a job or your agent, you know, quits uh, the, you know, the business and you got to find a new agent and you can't get an audition to save your life. 
just those one little moments make it all absolutely worthwhile. Terry, I know exactly what you're talking about, brother. Last question. What is it that you want to accomplish now in Hollywood? Don't say just continue working. What is it? What's the thing that you want more now than ever before out of this business? Um, two things. Okay. I would love to have one really good scene with someone I really, really love and admire. And Al Pacino, you know, someone like that. Just one scene. Doesn't have to be a big thing. Doesn't have to be a starring role. One scene with someone that I've always looked up to. Really, really looked up to. That's one. And uh, two is to get a couple of the movies made that, I've, that I'll direct uh, eventually. <laughs> okay. Get those made. I have several films that I'm trying to, you know, get financed and make. And uh, one of them in particular that uh, very, I really want to get made. So. Well, Those Carrie, I things. have a lot of faith in you, man. Like I said, your IMDb speaks a lot because it's pretty much continuously working since you started. That yeah. says something. That says something. Thank you, brother. And Carrie, you know what I, I've loved during this whole conversation? Is that me talking to you? I still see that kid from making the grade. Oh, man. I'm not kidding <laughs> you, dude. When did you get rid of the glasses? Do you feel like the glasses helped um, or hurt your character? No, they helped a lot in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, because all I played was nerds in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like nerd guy, you know, for years. <laughs> you know, the pocket protector and the, uh, you know, right. uh, uh, high waters. Um, I got rid of them, I don't know. Uh, you know when it was? It was 21 Jump Street, actually. Really? That changed things for me. Yeah. Is there anything else I need to know? Any p last piece of advice? Anything else that I need to know before we call this an end? No, just for for you, for me, for every actor out there, it's all just perseverance, you know? Perseverance, just never, dude. never quitting. Never Amen, quitting. brother. I saw a cartoon recently of a guy um, in a, like a tunnel with a pick. And he's he's picking. You can see what's that? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. You see the, the the other side of the tunnel that he can't see, and it's filled with diamonds. Yes. And one more strike at that wall, and all the diamonds would yes, fall through. Yes. Yes. But I instead, love that. in the cartoon, he's walking the opposite ah, way. He's got the pick over he his quit hand. right before yeah. he's about to hit it. Exactly. He's got the pick over his hand. He's given up. He's walking away. And I think about that cartoon once in a while, and think, you know, just one more strike could be the one. You know, you can go on a million auditions, and then quit, and the million and one is the one that hits. You know. Well, you started off in this business as a character, right? Yeah. I think your character now, your look is fantastic. And then I, I see it as a series regular look. I do too. Like a, uh, yeah, I'm not kidding you, like Anyone a CBS out procedural yeah, please. type of show. Yeah. Terry. Sounds good. One last thing. Okay. Will you tell everybody bye out there? Goodbye, everybody. We love you.